when I first got this thing, I thought I made a huge mistake. But after spending a little time with it and learning it, I really do like it now. Hello and welcome to The Generational Gamer. I got a Steam Deck and I got this stuff with it. Let's start with an unboxing. Attention, 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 attention. Let's flip that over, it'll give you a little bit of a guide as to far as what everything is and what it does. You get the pop-up menu on the left for the left one and right on the right one. Now, let's take a look at what's in this box. Ooh, as I drop it. Don't drop it, Prime. Okay, here we go. Box is opening. And what is in there but the power cord? It's a good thing I ordered a second one of those and then accidentally a third one. Now, here we have it. It is the unit itself. Now, I bought the 64 gigabyte model. I figure I am more than capable of upgrading it if I so desire, but I also bought a 512 gigabyte SD card, which I might add is already more than halfway full. So, there we have it. The place where you hide an extra power cord. Ooh. And let me just tell you, this thing is friggin' huge. It is a bit bigger than the Switch. It's sealed. Let's cut that open and, and access the Steam Deck. Yep, I had to use scissors to cut that open. Let's take a look at it. Da 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 da! It's beautiful. You can see the switch is considerably smaller than this thing. Okay, so this is the official power supply. This is the unofficial power supply. According to Steam, it should work just fine. The dock. A 512 gigabyte A2 card, screen protector, and case, which should be compatible with this right here, this dock. All right, go ahead, what's the difference? The difference between the two chargers are that the name brand one, which is this one, has is uh, matte on the sides, while this one has is glossy and has uh, the corners indented, while this one does not. It does weigh less. You can clearly feel a difference in weight as well. But that's okay. This one's just for temporary use. I have a second one of these that's going to be connected all the time, and then one that can be moved around. All right, screen protector is on. Seems pretty solid. Only took a few moments. Let's try this thing now. Yeah, nothing else in that box. All right, kiddo, we have the Steam Deck. What does this thing include? The protective kit, compatible for Steam Deck. Oh, that's for the uh, buttons. How the hell do you put this in? And it's on. And everything is reachable. SD card, all the buttons, and it's an added bonus. Kickstand. Kickstand. Before that was better than the switches. That's pretty solid. Okay, so neat. Pull it back, and then it adjusts. See? So if you wanted to sit back a little further, there you go. Steam logo. So I'm gonna something just yeah. Fine. You wanna come on this side? Okay. All right. So welcome. Oh, is that like, uh, yeah. just Let's go over to the dock now, okay? Okay. Let's set this puppy up. We'll start by the language and the Wi-Fi. Once you connect to the Wi-Fi, the real fun begins. It does take a bit, so I sped it up quite a bit here. And then eventually you'll be able to log into your system using your Steam account. And now, welcome to my Steam library. So I got the 64 gig model, so an SD card is mandatory. As you can see, just using the basics, it's already filling up a small fraction of the space. 
So let's go ahead and add the card, format it, and start downloading stuff. And just like that, there is space on my Steam Deck. Let's start downloading the games that I paid for. As a cautionary tale, even if you don't store your games on the internal memory, it still will store something on the internal memory, even if it's Proton or Proton GE. You really want to download that as well so you can play the games that don't work with the regular Proton that Valve uses. So initially when I got the Steam Deck, I was thinking to myself, oh man, I made a huge mistake because nothing really worked with it. and. It took me a long time to get used to dealing with things that I never had to deal with since the days of dealing with consoles, you know? I haven't really messed with this stuff too much. But it actually works really, really well once you fight with it. Proton DB will be your best friend here. So it plays damn near everything. I've shown how I've uh, made my own how I've uh, imaged my own games and stuff like that, so I can put them on here completely legitimately. And it allows me to play everything down to the oldest, down up to the newest. It's really, really cool. And I've been a huge fan of these uh, games for a while now. It's just an excellent way to play your video games. And in time, I imagine I will update my uh, Steam Deck to be a little bit bigger because I have already filled up the space. But this game plays pretty well. You do have to modify it a little bit. It won't play na natively because of the EA launcher, which is kind of a pain in the ass, but I can show how to fix that too. You, you have to use a tool called Proton Tricks. And what that does is it allows you to uh, Install or uninstall the EA launcher if it doesn't launch if it doesn't set up correctly It's definitely not a uh, plug-and-play device And if you think that's what it is, I know a lot of youtubers have made it seem that way But yeah, it is definitely not not to say it can't be done But you're gonna want to download a few things as soon as you get to that point you're going to want to download Proton GE, which is the Wine layer. If you've ever used Linux before, Wine is the Windows emulator in Linux. Um, Crossover, which is a commercial version of it, is also available on Linux, but it's also available for Macs. Um, I really enjoy using the setup too, so I would encourage it. When I first got this thing, I thought I made a huge mistake. But, after spending a little time with it and learning it, I really do like it now. So, I can play damn near everything. I would say maybe one of my entire Steam library games doesn't work, and that is Raiden Legacy. I'm still working on it. I've read that you have to use Proton Tools, which I think I've gotten to work. This one I used Proton Tools because the EA launcher didn't launch properly, so I had to uninstall it. And this way you can actually do it. It allows you to uninstall Windows programs. So it involves a little tinkering. And if you want videos on this type of thing, I'll be happy to show you. But for right now, that's all I got. Have a good one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Goodbye.